The next one I'll quickly talk about as well, another Apple TV production, Masters of the Air. So this is now the third collaboration between Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg producing a World War II miniseries. They, they first produced Band of Brothers back in 2001, which was after their uh-huh, first collaboration, uh-huh. Saving Private Ryan, obviously a huge film for them both, award-winning film. Um, but then they decided to go and do, do something behind the scenes and produce a miniseries for HBO, Band of Brothers, which is one of the greatest miniseries ever. It, it's, it's a phenomenal work. It's a phenomenal achievement. Um, they once again teamed back up 10 years later, 2011, and did The Pacific. That was actually the first one that I saw. I remember watching that a few years after it came out on HBO, and I was, I was just, you know, really, I was really kind of enriched by it just because of how in-depth they go with the stories that they're following. And now you fast forward about 12 or 13 years later, Masters of the Air is kind of this this third entry into this uh, the, the spiritual the spiritual series of World War II dramas that they're developing together. Um, the difference is, is that this is for Apple TV Plus as opposed to HBO. Uh, they they were not able to continue that relationship with them. I think HBO went ahead and exited out of the show. Apple TV Plus bought it. It's probably due to the finances because this is an incredibly expensive show. It's like two hundred fifty mm-hmm. million dollars budgeted. Um, but they just had all nine episodes finally premiere. Um, they were re- releasing them on a week by week basis. Um, and it's also notable because it's starring Austin Butler, who has a lot of, you know, a lot of heat around him, a lot of energy. Uh, Barry Keoghan's also in the show, large ensemble cast. And overall, it was really good. It was really, really, it, it was, it was an amazing watch, you know, for the most part. I have a few nitpicks, but on the positive side of things, the money's on the screen. It looks phenomenal. You can obviously tell that they spent a lot of money to produce this and to make it feel real. Um, we are following uh, the Bloody Hundredth, which is a, a, an Air Force group in particular that fought during World War II. They were uh, known as the 100th Bomb Group in World War II. Um, and so you're following them on these dangerous missions, you know, in, in Germany, Germany uh, occupied Europe during the midst of, you know, the deadliest war in history. And there are several action sequences that are harrowing. They are completely shocking to just see how violent it gets i mean if you've seen saving private ryan and then if you've seen like those successive uh shows that they produce for hbo they are they are not pulling any punches with the uh with the with the the violence and and the and the bloodshed Mm. and the carnage of war that's all in the show and and to see it from the context in the sky you know air force pilots Mm, mm -hmm. completely new dynamic because those other shows were following army and 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 military people on the ground you know easy company was the focus of band of brothers they were largely boots on the ground and then the pacific mostly focused on the ground battle in japan on the japan side of the war um but this one now taking things to the air complete creates a completely new new dynamic which is just it's it's really fascinating to see and again they 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 have just so many technical achievements here it's one of the best looking shows on TV in quite a while. Um, it, it certainly deserves the treatment I think it got in terms of a marketing standpoint and and having a platform that can really support the budget of what this what this thing would cost because you want to tell the story as authentically as possible. You want to be true because um, it is also based on a book, you know. So you have to certainly pay respect to the real people involved in these situations and of course that sacrificed their lives um, because the the 100th bomb group in World War II, they are known to have lost a lot of people. They lost a lot of soldiers. Many, many, mm-hmm. many, many, many people died. Um, and this show shows that. This show absolutely shows, like, wow, I did not expect you to go already, but you're dead on, like, episode two because that's how brutal it was. Um, the only thing I will say about the show is that I think, you know, it's hard to not compare it to those other two achievements, um, especially Band of Brothers. That one in particular is really just a – it's a real hallmark of television – Um, One of the things that Band of Brothers did when it was profiling Easy Company is that every episode started off with an interview with a real soldier, with a real person, um, giving their perspective Mm. on a certain situation. And oftentimes that episode would would be that very event that they just talked about for the first like two or three minutes. They would talk about the circumstances and why they were in a certain places and and how much it impacted their lives and how how deadly it might have been. And then you spend the entire episode kind of focused on that on that moment. We don't get that here because they decided to do a standalone separate documentary instead, which also dropped alongside the season pre- or the series premiere, um, right. not the premiere, but the, 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 the finale, I'm mistaken. Um, it just dropped, but they, they, they mostly, I think, reserve a lot of those real interviews, those real testimonies for that documentary, which comes out alongside that. I haven't watched it yet. You know, I want to try to, you know, hopefully get around to it. Um, but I thought that that touch was, you know, kind of missing. Um, and another thing that is a bit of a drawback, uh, they heavily promoted and marketed the Tuskegee Airmen in this show, 
And unfortunately, they are kind of an afterthought. We don't see them until episode eight of nine. So mm-hmm. really the penultimate mm-hmm. episode. And so I was like looking for them the ent- entire show. I'm like, where the where is this going to come in? Like, there's a lot of characters, a lot of story. We're kind of getting to the end here. It feels like we're kind of rushing. And I think that they 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 held their they held their guns too long on that one. Uh, no pun intended. But um, that, that was a little disappointing to see because I really wanted to get more into that especially because they were so featured in the marketing in, in such a heavy context. Um, so by the end of it, a lot of the pacing, I think we felt a little bit rushed you know, by it. I think it was uh, one of those things where all of the stories, all of the threads weren't necessarily wrapped up in the best way because there are so many characters and so many threads um, in mm-hmm. the story. But you know, beyond that, it's still it's still an achievement, I think, of a tele- television show, um, especially in this landscape, to get something that, you know, it kind of feels like, you know, Apple is 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 they're not taking the place of HBO, but they are forging their own path and, and taking on some real quality stories and quality mm-hmm. series and working with the likes of Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg for, you know, the, now their third collaboration in this in this context. That's 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 definitely a coup for them. And so um, overall, I thought it was a really, really solid show, really, really great addition to the spiritual trilogy of World War Two dramas that they've made. Yeah, I was going to bring up exactly what you just said. Apple TV's kind of eaten. <laughs> in terms of they're not just putting out stuff just you know what i'm saying like they are actually curating everything i feel like that they want to do and i have to give them props for that you know what i'm saying you just talked about spielberg and hanks they got they got scorsese on there now they got ridley scott on there you know what i'm saying they they do the it Cohen brother uh, ethan Co- or the Cohen, joe, uh, joe cohen with uh the crazy. tragedy Macbeth. Yeah, yeah oh man you were just talking about lessons in chemistry and we've talked about morning show and ted lasso and they're they own to something so shout, shout out to apple tv man that's that's that's, that's pretty dope they can uh, afford to for sure i mean they got they got the money uh i think uh the, the money no, that they absolutely. spend on <laughs> on their product it's really a drop in the bucket for apple as a company uh mm-hmm. it's unfortunate though like i saw some data a while ago i think it was right before the premiere of masters of the air in fact um and they've had a lot come out they had lessons in chemistry that led into this mm-hmm. they have another show out right now um that's getting some attention about the fashion industry in the 70s if i'm not mistaken um and 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 nobody's watching their stuff like no comparatively to the other big platforms you know the disney pluses right. and netflixes mm-hmm. nobody's really watching the stuff i think that their numbers are super super low which you know a part of me is like i wish that that was not the case i wish more people obviously saw these good things but at the same time yeah. it also kind of signals to me that they're doing it for the love of actually like exactly. creating quality exactly. productions quality films quality tv shows i was very skeptical of apple before they launch yeah, their, their service. I'm like, why? What are you mm-hmm. doing? But they've proven time and time again, like, as you said, they are curating a fine selection mm-hmm. of quality things. You know, everything doesn't work, but I mean, I get on their platform far more than I do on a Netflix, if I'm just being honest. You know, it's it's just one of those places where it's like, I'd be more willing to take a chance on a new exactly. Apple TV Plus show than I would on a Netflix show or a movie. Like, I'm going to go there first if I, if I, if I could choose. Yeah, because it feels like they're trying. I know it sounds crazy. Not that Netflix isn't like trying, but you know, they Netflix is all about how much content can we get on this platform right now. Yeah, and and now they're <laughs> they're trying to reel that back now. Mm-hmm. But those first few right. years, it was like let's just churn and burn and just like get through it. But I think they're exactly. seeing like they're seeing their counterparts like Apple, like oh well, wait, like if we actually take our time and like really really pay attention maybe we can get that best picture oscar that apple already beat us to with coda a few years ago like we still have gotten mm, netflix true. still hasn't gotten that but apple you know they they picked a good one there hey that's a that's a really good point man it, it, it really is especially um yeah man Nef- especially oh especially to the point you were talking about by hbo because hbo was that and then it's not yeah. that they're not anymore, but one is just kind of on fire in general. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? It's not, on. it's not that HBO is not that anymore. They're just not as together as we've known them to it's be. It's an identity <laughs> crisis that they're still <laughs> the going best. through. Yeah, exactly. And and it feels like Apple has it together right now. People just aren't watching how they, how they should be. So yeah, that's, that's really interesting. But yeah, I got to give kudos to Apple. Last thing I want to say is, um, I'm really sad about Tuskegee Airmen because uh, when you were yeah. talking about it, I was like, dang, are the Tuskegee Airmen in this? We're going to have to do it ourselves. We need a black director, black. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need a black director. We need to find some people, get it together. Black people, gonna have, we're going to have to get that together ourselves. Didn't George Lucas try to make a movie like a while ago? What was that? Uh, uh, we got Red Tails. Red, that was, a while yeah, that ago. was the movie that he tried to make. I, we got Red Tail. It was okay, but yeah. the way filmmaking is now is just so different yeah. and it feels more real. <laughs> Red Tails was like, it felt a little comic booky, and it sh- probably shouldn't have. You know what I'm saying? And You're so right. I remember I, uh, that too. It was, it was, yeah. it felt a little 
removed from the real world for whatever re- yeah. weird reason. It was strange. Yeah, it's like they were a little too superhero ish, yeah. if that makes sense. Like we need a little more human side. So hopefully, somebody, another director comes and somebody wants to tackle the Tuskegee Airmen, and we can get shoot. If Apple TV is willing to do it, Apple TV pick up the Tuskegee Airmen show just like this and a documentary right next to it. God damn it! But yeah, I just, I just wanted to add that. No doubt, that 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 would be nice to see. I think I think a proper treatment. It's overdue at this at this particular point. Um, do you think Apple is going to like? It feels like they're probably going to buy a movie studio soon. Like that that feels as as we're talking mm. about their their place in the industry, I feel like they're probably going to make a purchase or a play for somebody. Uh and the most likely candidates Ooh. at this particular point, I'd say Paramount. That that is, you know, number okay. 1 probably most likely cuz they are also on fire. Uh, mm-hmm. no shots, just real. And they uh, are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're really on fire. You're right. Um yep. Sony Pictures, I don't think that that's crazy. Like the just the just the 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 motion picture group obviously not sony as a company but just like the, right, the right, studio right. um mm-hmm. and warner brothers discovery that could still be a thing like that i Oof. feel like that could still happen you know another yeah another purchase um I, I feel like within the next two to three years that that's my prediction that they're gonna eventually make a play and become a serious mm-hmm. contender on the theatrical side you know while they're still bolstering their streaming service to create just a pipeline because we saw both Napoleon and Killers of the Flower Moon, they went to theatrical distributors. They went to Paramount, you know, and they 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 made yeah. those movies. And then Argyle, that just got distributed by it was Universal, if I'm not mistaken. So they already have these relationships. So right. It feels like that they're probably gonna go full feet first. But I don't know, you know, have any thoughts on that or like where they where they might try to steer their money in the future if they want to buy a studio? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because like you said, they they it seems like they got the money to do it, but I think they want to make Make sure the play is smart, um, and, and and make sure it makes sense for them. Like well, they probably are le- legit shopping the studios, like you are right now. Like this is execs right now. Like, hmm, how do we feel about all of these studios out here right now? Like, can we? What does a purchase look like? Um, and so I, I I I see it. I see it for sure being on the table because in low key with all the companies you you just named. It might be like a welcome buy. Like, yeah, y'all might need to get bought. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like, for sure. Like, you need yeah. to be acquired. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Like, we, we can't keep doing this. Yeah. It's yeah. about time somebody acquires you. So, yeah, I, I, I it, it would be a welcome change. But I, I think you're right about that. I think there might be something on the horizon. Um, in, in uh, another good indicator is like sometimes looking like like all the small add-ons that are on there and which ones they like promote the most, mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So I think paying attention to that stuff is really cool too. Cause they're always talking about, of course, like the MGM pluses and the whatever other right. add-ons are on there. But sometimes that stuff leads to other things. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, that's why you were promoting that add-on so much. You thinking about buying them. So yeah, I, I think you're onto something. Definitely some synergy. We'll, we'll certainly have to see. Uh,